The user interface is the point of human-computer interaction and communication in a device. We are discussing here on graphical user interface created on Excel for the purpose of running Python program from the Excel. We are discussing total four methods. The first three methods are introduced. We will focus on the fourth method to create user interface using custom UI editor. User interface has been proposed when YouTube titled Running Python from Excel was published. At that time, the third method, Customize Ribbon method was adopted without detailed discussion. We are discussing all the four methods, including the Customize Ribbon method. All the four methods are well recognized. Method 1. Insert a shape and assign a macro to it. Method 2. Add a control on quick access toolbar with a macro assigned. Method 3. Create a custom tab, groups under the tab and add controls with a macro assigned under group in hierarchy. Add it on the workbook ribbon. Method 4. Create a hierarchy like method 3 based on custom UI editor. Ribbon X code is required. Method 1 is the most simple and widely used method. Insert a shape on the worksheet. Assign a macro to the added shape. Click the shape to run the macro. Go to the tab named Insert on the ribbon. Select a shape you like. Place the shape at convenient location and format the shape including name on its face. Right-click the shape to pop up shortcut menu. Select Assign Macro from the list. Choose a macro from the Assign Macro dialog. Click OK. Now method 1, User Interface is ready. Click the shape to run the macro. In summary, this method is easy and straightforward. A weak point is the shape can be mixed up with other shapes you may create for other purpose. Let's move to the second method. Add a control on the quick access toolbar is another simple method. It is a semi-permanent method rather than temporary like method 1. Go to File menu. Select Options on the left list of the File menu. Select Quick Access Toolbar on Excel Options dialog. Select Macros in the left list, label Choose Commands from. Select a macro to be initiated from the list newly popped up. Press Add button in the middle. This will add the selected macro in the right list. If you like to have different icon and name, not default one, press a button, modify. Choose your preferred icon and rename the default name. You will notice that changes are made as you modified. Now a new control is added to the quick access toolbar. Click the new control to initiate the program assigned to it. Method 2 is not complicated but quite straightforward. A problem is that the new control persists to display for any Excel file, regardless of its utility. Now method 3 is here. Method 3 was adopted to the previous video without detailed discussion. This method create a hierarchy of a tab, groups, and controls like the built-in tab. Go to File menu. Select Options on the left list of the File menu. Select Customize Ribbon on Excel Options dialog. A dialog titled Customize Ribbon is displayed. First of all, let's create a new tab as top of hierarchy. Press Add Tap button below right list box. A new tab along with a group under the tab is added to the right list box representing the ribbon. The default name for the tab and for the group are generic and you may want to display your own identifiable name. Press a button labeled Rename below the left list box. Then enter your own name to be displayed inside text box and press OK. The name of the new tab is changed. Next, give your own name for the new group. Select New Group Custom under the Change tab inside the right list box to display a dialog titled Rename. You enter your own group name inside text box on the Rename dialog. At this time, we can define the control under the group to complete hierarchy. 
Now the procedure is similar to that discussed. Select Macros in the left list, label Choose Commands from. Select a macro to be initiated from the list of macros available to the workbook we are working on. Press the Add button located in between left and right list box. This will add the selected macro in the right list labeled as Customize the Ribbon. The macro you selected from the left list is added as a control under the defined group inside the right list. As a default, the added control displays the macro name along with default icon. You may want to make your own display. Click the added control. The rename dialog pops up. Give your own name to the macro control by pressing rename button. Give name and select an icon type. Choose your preferred icon and rename the default name. Back to the worksheet. A new tab, Scheduling, is added to the ribbon. A new group, Real World, under the tab is added. Three new controls are added in the group. This is what we demanded. To run macro, click the corresponding control on the ribbon. Method 3 creates a hierarchy of multiple controls like built-in Excel controls on the ribbon. Looks good. A problem is that the new control persists to display for any Excel file, regardless of its utility. Here we have method 4 to discuss about. Like method 3, method 4 as well creates a hierarchy of a tab, groups, and controls. The difference from method 3 lies in the fact that the added tab is shown only on workbook where ribbon Xcode is written. We are discussing with two parts, setup and ribbon X coding. This part is for the users who have yet to use custom UI editor. Start from Googling to download Custom UI Editor. I would like to recommend TheBetterSolution.com, comprehensive, complete, and well-organized website. My machine is reliant on Windows 10. Thus, Windows 11 version is beyond this video. Scroll down a little bit on the same page to find Windows 10 version. Download Windows 10 version by clicking .zip file highlighted in blue. The zip file is downloaded to your machine. You may move the file to your folder. Unzip the zip file. My preference is to pin its application file to taskbar in order to facilitate access for frequent use. Open the custom UI editor by clicking its application icon on taskbar. Editor opens and we notice three tabs and five icons. First thing is to define an Excel file where custom UI is created using this editor. To do so, go to File tab. Click the File tab, then click Open on the list down. Browse an Excel file and open the file where custom UI is required to be created in. Name of the selected file is added to the left view section. Rather than start coding from scratch, go to the Insert tab and select a sample XML. Excel a custom tab from the list. The editor has a validation function of coding. Let's check the sample XML file. Click the fourth icon check mark from the left of the menu. On action attribute is assigned with function to be called. Callback functions are generated by click the last icon on the menu. You may copy and paste it on a standard code module of Excel file as a starting point of callback functions. To embed XML coding into the Excel file, you need to save the XML coding whose file name is given custom UI14.xml. Let's check whether custom UI is generated according to custom UI14.xml. A new tab named Contoso is shown after Home tab. Select the Contoso, then its groups and controls are displayed. 
This is based on sample XML. We need to make custom UI14.XML file applicable to our demand. Part 4 discusses about step-by-step -step procedure to build XML coding to support our project. One tab named Scheduling. Two groups, one for theoretical and another for real world. Each group consists of three controls. We will modify the XML coding created and embedded to Excel file in Part 3. Open the custom UI editor. Open Excel file. The XML coding are viewed in editing section of the editor. Let's modify to have two groups and three controls each. Let's see how the modification we made works well or not. Click Validate icon on the menu. Every control should has unique ID. Each control's ID is made unique and labeling is done for the project. Validate update of the coding. Once the coding is formed well, Save the XML file. Open Excel file to check new show up on the ribbon. A tab with name changed to scheduling is shown. Under the tab, two groups are created, one labeled theoretical and another real world. Three controls are created for each group. However, icons looks not good representation of program. Image MSO attribute will do to change to your preferred image. Over 1,000 images are available in Excel. The images and their image identifier are found referring to the dialog titled Customize the Ribbon. You choose your preferred image in left list box. Hovering on the control name, a kind of tooltip appears with its image identifier inside parentheses at the right end. The image identifier, case sensitive, is to be assigned to image MSO attribute. Six controls icon image identifier are newly given. Let's check this change is well made. Click validate control on the ribbon. Save XML coding and open Excel file to see whether new control icon images look good to you. We need actual callback function to be called. As discussed before, the callback function is placed in a standard code module of Excel. An action attribute is used to call the callback function. Generate callback functions by clicking the icon on the menu. Copy and paste it on a standard code module of Excel. Go to Excel VBA Editor. Create a standard code module named Callback Procedure. The callback function are pasted and coded to respond to control on the ribbon. A callback function is updated to see the actual program work as expected. Click the Determine icon under Group Real World. Program runs in success. You may want tool tip of control when hovering the control on the ribbon. This is implemented by including screen tip and super tip attribute of the control. Method 4 requires XML coding. I presume that the coding is not complicated. Its advantage over other three methods is significant. We are ready to make a standalone program. I will call Project Scheduling. Six different scheduling methods are covered. Three theoretical scheduling. Another three real-world scheduling. Program is written in Python and run from Excel using the method for user interface. In the next video, we will discuss about Python scripting for real-world scheduling and a standalone program package. Excel as front-end program and Python as back-end program. Thanks for watching.